today uh, we are doing something. Uh, uh, we're doing something uh, interesting today. Uh, so t- today's sermon w- shouldn't be very long, I hope. Uh, we know how that goes. Um, <laughs> talk about self-confession right there. You know, be here for four hours preaching. Um, but but no, today I want to I want to cover the sermon and then do something that we haven't done in a while. Maybe not ever in a service environment. So God helping us, we'll get there. Let us pray. Let us pray. Um Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to be alive, to to come to church, to learn at your feet, to to learn something unique. We pray, oh God, that Lord, today we'll walk away with with something deep, something specific to our situation, something we can apply, something that draws us closer to you, helps us to understand you, and helps us to understand ourselves. Father God, we pray that as a community, this will be a moment of deep growth for us in the name of Jesus. God, I cover this word in the blood of Jesus. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. Give me the utterance to be able to speak your word in a way that 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 you want me to today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we are we are part of this is this is like an interesting thing. So we, we had a series, a two-part series on sin, which was great. Um, and then we started working on you, which is a loose continuation of sin, right? And last week, right, if you all remember uh, what we were talking about, we were talking about Lazarus, right? And how Lazarus was, uh, was dead and he was raised back to life. And, and but, but the specific part we focused on was the part about being loosed that you can be made alive but until you are loosed you are still carrying some of those things that were that were that that had you tied down so Lazarus was 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 dead and he was wrapped in linen and the bible says that his hands his feet and his face were wrapped very key things in scripture right the hands we talked about referring to your ability to do so you've gone past the event, the event has happened, but your ability to do is still hampered by something relating to what you're coming out of. We talked about the feet, his feet was wrapped. That talks about your ability to go. That means that your ability to change uh, where you are, maybe some direction, maybe some perspective, maybe your, your position on something, that you're, you're stuck in a place like that. And then the covering of the face signified your ability to be recognized, that that ability to be known, or your struggle with your identity, or your struggle with with presenting the version of yourself, or being stuck in a previous version of yourself that you can't get out of. Powerful stuff. You got to go watch it if you have not or if you weren't around. Today's sermon is part two of Working on You. And working on you, the subtitle today is God's Three Levers. God's Three Levers. Now, now, uh, before we get into this, heads up. So today, I want you to really, if you're taking notes, take notes. That's great. Um, At the end of this, we may have a conversation. So I want you to really be thinking about how this stuff applies to you and how this stuff applies to your life. Uh, we may, if we have time, we'll sh- we'll, we'll have a conversation and, and share. Um, uh, and uh, and 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 also, I want you to. Um, yeah, I think that's. I, I think that, that that so far so good, right? So just get ready for that. Um, I I love, and you may have known this already. I love talking about principles in the Bible principles in scripture things that you find over and over and over those things attract me they're they're, they're very uh, um I, I love discovering those things that you find over and over and over again in scripture and this is one of them those three levers now anyone ever heard the saying the only thing constant in life is change yeah yeah we talk about it all the time. We we know that change happens. We know that change happens. But the truth is that the thing that is more constant than change is God, because because God has been consistent through all the changes that have happened. But it's true. Change is a frequent occurrence in life. Change is is constant. 
And um, as believers, there's one thing, I, I mean, there's many things, but I think there's one thing that we desire very much in our lives that is, but is actually very evasive. We, I mean, we, we want it. All, I mean, if you ask any believer, and once I ask you this or, or tell you this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, Pastor Toby, I, completely. But is this one thing that we really want? It, it, we need it, but many times we're not sure if we have it. We almost have to just believe that if we're doing all the things that we're doing and we have the right mindset that we will actually have this thing. But it's not something that we just, we just grab a hold of and, 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 and have right away. Let me explain it this way. Anyone ever left on a trip and you're going on the trip and then you wonder, did I lock the back? Did I lock the door? It's like that that thing. It's like you always look. I mean, like you always lock the door, but like now you're going on a two day trip, and you're like, I mean, I always do, but like I don't remember the exact moment that I locked the door, or or you you left, or you you gave something to to someone to go do something with, and you're like, I wonder if I gave them. Or, oh, here's another good one. You just finished the conversation, and you're you've left the conversation, and you're like, was I? Did that? Did they? I mean, was it a bit too? Anyone ever had that before, right? Absolutely. It's that thing that it's like you can't really put your hand on it. You want it. You want to have that certainty, but you can't really put your hand on it. And that thing for us as believers is this. That is the assurance that we are in God's plan. All of us. All of us. See, yeah. The moment I said it, you're like, yep, yeah, yeah. All of us want it. All of us desire it. All of us move through life as believers wanting to be in alignment with God. It's, we cherish it. We, we lo- oh, my goodness. I know it, that there are times in your life when you recognize, you know, I feel like I'm in God's will right now. You just have this pep in your step. You just feel like, yeah, like, you know, like, you know, prayer is good. Bible study is great. Like, there are just things that are happening. You're like, yeah, I feel like I'm connected right now. I feel like I'm, in, I'm connected to God's will right now. And that's very important for us, the assurance but the reality is that even during the best of times, we don't always have this assurance. Isn't that the truth? We don't always feel completely there. And if you're like me, there are times you feel inspired to do something or go somewhere or have conversations. And, and you're just like, I just wonder if this is like right in God's will. I just wonder. I want to make sure that, that this is perfectly in God's will. The truth of the matter is that is that many times when we are if, even when we're in God's will, we don't have this assurance. Again, we're, I, I'm always I'm always looking for maturity for us. Like, cause I, I don't want to preach a word. It's like, yeah, it's great. Like, some some of this stuff will is it has to challenge you. Even when you are at your best in God, you will not have the assurance. Sometimes that you are perfectly acting in God. Because think about through scripture. There are people who were in God's will and things were still like, you know, like God was still with them, but it it wasn't really working out. How do you navigate that? How do you navigate? How do that feeling of, I wonder if I'm still on the same page. Oh, here's right. You started in God's will and it's been six months since you've been doing the thing or you've made the change and you're like, well, I used to hear God so clearly when I started this thing, but right now I don't know. A relationship, <laughs> a job, um, whatever, whatever. And today, what we're going to be talking about is three levers that God, we're talking about working on you, right? Three levers that God uses many times to make changes or to affect our lives that sometimes will feel like great things happening and sometimes will feel like it's not so great happening. These are three levers that God uses to work on us. Think about as a sculptor, right? These are three levels that he, that, that, that he pulls. Now, now, uh, um, um, I just want to be careful here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for grace in my head. Like, God, how do I? Um, these three levers don't always have to function in order. And these three levers 
levers are not always bad things, but they're not always good things. You guys with me so far? I just want to give you enough context before we get into it, okay? All right, here we go. Lever number one, destiny. Destiny. That's talking about who you are and who you are being shaped into. That's a lever. That's an area of your life that God can, can pull and work while he's working on you. Your destiny, who you are and who you are being shaped into becoming. Lever number two, destination. That is talking about where you're going. So destiny, destination, where you're going. And the third one, direction. And that is how and when you get there. So number one, destiny, who you are, the, per the person of you, and what God is trying to do in your life to shape you and mold you and change you to become something. You've got destination, that is where you're going, the purpose for which God is doing that thing in your life and, and, and his work in, uh, uh, on your life for, the, for his general uh, 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 purpose. And then there is, there is direction, which, which influences how and when you get to your destiny or destination. Are you guys with me so far? These are three very critical levers that as you look through your life, you will find these three levers everywhere. And that's the conversation we're going to have afterwards. So, so I want you to start thinking about your life as I talk about this stuff. Because as a matter of fact, the, the biggest value for, for us today, I think, will be after I'm done and we start to have conversations. So I want you to prepare your minds. I want you to start thinking about your life and as much of it as you can share with with the room would be great because there are people who are going through similar things as you who when they hear you share it it's a it's it's a blessing to them are we all together you got you guys okay great okay so we know that they don't always come in order uh, one might look like pain while the others don't and so on so today what i've, I've done is i'm going to look at a few people in scripture and see how god pulled these three levers in their lives so that we can really study. I, I love principles, things that can be found over and over and over again. So here, here we go. Let's get into it. Abraham. Abraham. We know the general story of Abraham, right? That's the person God calls and says, I'm, I'm just going to do all these things in your life. We'll talk about that in a moment. But God called Abraham. God has a purpose for Abraham's life. And let's look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And even though the story of Abraham is quite e extensive, this batch of scripture really captures this stuff. And the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It's interesting. We know that after this, Abram had to wait a long time to have Isaac. Right? We know this story. We know that there was a, a lot of frustration in his life about that. And we know that in an attempt to rush the job, right, he had a son through his maiden. And God was like, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. The way that this is going to happen is through Sarah, your wife, even at an old age. Are we all together so far? So let's take a combination of those two. The scripture we just read where God calls him to go from his country, go to a land that he will tell him, and then what happens? We will see, watch this, we'll see that when it comes to destination, God pulled that lever by saying, go from your country to a land that I will show you. That is all about destination. You guys see that? You guys see that? Go from here. Go from here to a place, a different place. I'm changing your destination. Okay? 
Now, destiny. I will make you into a great nation. Why am I asking you to change your destination? Because there's something that I'm doing in your life. I'm going to change. I'm changing your destiny from just this random guy who is over here. No, 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 no. That's not the end. I am going to make you into a great nation. That is the destiny. So in order to do that, I have to change your destination. And the direction... Oh, no, 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 no. You, you went through Haggai. No, no, no. The direction, the way I'm going to do this is through Sarah. This was God taking the life of Abraham and working on Abraham through these three levers. Go from here to a land that I will show you. I'm, gonna, I'm just, I'm just going to change your the, the, like the where you are. And again, this doesn't really have to be physical destination, by the way. It's just I'm going to change your position. I'm going to have. I'm going to cause a shift. Go from here. Go there. Why? For what purpose? To what end? Oh, I'm changing the very destiny of your life, the very trajectory of your life, who you are becoming. Remember, destiny is about who, God working on who. Abraham, you are no longer just, in fact, in fact, I'm going to change your name from Abraham to Abraham. Like, your identity is being completely overturned. Like, everything about you is changing. Destiny. Direction. This there's a specific way that I want you to do it. Oh no, but God, I'm getting I'm getting old. Not, that, that, leave that to me. <laughs> I'll figure that part out. This is the direction that we're gonna get this done. Isn't that incredible? For some of you, for some of you, you might already be thinking, right? And I want you to start thinking about these things. How how what were the moments in my life, right, that God has pulled one of these levers of destiny of destination or of direction because i promise you i promise you these three levers have been at work in your life for a long time now let me ask you which was the which which do you think was the lever of joy that caused like oh my god yeah god you want to do this Pfft, i'm here i'm here for it which which one which one do you, do you think when you, when you look at those two yeah. What? Me? Father of many nations? Uh, yes, I'm here for it. Thank you very much. Where do I sign up? <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, let's go. Like, what? I believe. I receive that word. You, know, you ever read scripture? Like, like, yes, I'm standing on this word right here. Yes, pastor. I love that, right? Destiny. Okay. Now, it's possible, it's possible that maybe destination was also a thing of joy because, like, all these dudes out here worshiping idols, like, I see, just, I don't know. It doesn't sit right with me. So what? I mean, you want me to go somewhere? Ready for it. Anywhere but here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Direction, not so much. Because if you read the story, Abraham didn't hate his son, Ishmael. <laughs> In fact, Abraham was trying to lobby, like, well, I mean, this could work. And God was like, nah. Yes, it's ain't, this ain't it. What, what I'm trying to explain to you is that as God pulls these different levers, some of them might be like, what? Yes. Yes, Lord. And some of them at different times might be, why? But all together, when you put them together, God is doing a special work on you as he's pulling those to fulfill a grand purpose in your life. None of these things are happening at random. God is in control. And I prophesy over your life right now that no matter what lever is being pulled, no matter what is happening, that I pray that you will see, you will see the end in the name of Jesus. In other words, you will come to a place where you can look back and say, oh, that makes total sense now. God, I see it. Incredible stuff. Paul is another person like that. Paul is another person like that. This is actually quite interesting. So we're going to take probably, for Paul, we're going to take three chunks. So, so you know, I was explaining that these things don't necessarily happen in order. For Abraham, it, it happened in, in sort of a relatively linear 
fashion, go from the land that you are to a place that I'll show you. Okay, so I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And then to do that, I'm going to give you a son. And then from the son becomes, it, it was relatively linear. For Paul, it was very different. <laughs> these three moments, and these are just examples, these three moments were independent of each other, and that's the other thing that we have to walk away with, is that there are things that, that, that there are times that God is pulling these levers at moments that don't even sound or feel related. But these three levers does not mean that God is not working on you. Let's look at Paul. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Okay? This is the famous moment where Saul, he, that's who he was before, becomes Paul. The Bible says that, meanwhile, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, meaning the way of Christ, right, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners. Now, for some of you who may not be familiar, okay, Saul was no ordinary, uh, you know, I don't know, teacher of the law. No, no, no. He had a hatred for Christians. I mean, he, the Bible says he went to ask for permission. Hey, if I'm, I'm traveling a long way, if I see any of these Christians, can I arrest them? <laughs> I mean, how, how, how much hate do you have to have? Not like, well, you know, I'm just in my lane, you know, we talk, you know, stay, stay in your lane. No, no, no. Can I come out of my lane, seek them out, man or woman, and just arrest them? This is how bad it was, okay? Now, verse 3, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. It's so packed. You can see some of the levers being pulled here already. You're going to find that maybe at least two in there. There's one major one, but at least two in there are being pulled. So hold that in one pocket. This is the moment where Saul has an encounter with Jesus. It's a pivotal moment. It changes everything in his life. But now look at Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10. See what happens here. This is now after that encounter. Okay? So the other one was in Acts chapter 9. This is Acts chapter 16. Time has passed. Look at what happened. <laughs> Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Having been kept by the Spirit, from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So follow this really, really closely, okay? Let me start over. Paul and his companions traveled through the region of Phrygia and Galatia. Why? Why? Having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Okay? So Asia was the plan, but then they were roaming around in Phrygia and Galatia. Verse 7. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them. <laughs> okay? So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. Then during the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready and at once, at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So they were in Phrygia and Galatia. They were there because they couldn't go to Asia. But then they were like, all right, fine. Let's go to the border of Mysia and try to enter Bithynia. And then the Spirit of God was just like, nope. And then they passed by Mysia and they went to Troas. Do you see one of the levers being pulled right now? Big time. Big time. Now, as I always talk about when I talk about this scripture, if that was me, I'm still in development. Okay, your pastor is not a perfect person. Okay, I'm the first to tell you. If that was me, I may have had a different reaction. I may have had a little bit more frustration with God at this point in my life because that was, I mean, I, they weren't Ubering around. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> they weren't in an SUV with air conditioning. Okay, driving around like, I don't know, maybe we should go to Jersey, you know. 
All right, we got to Jersey. All right, traffic. All right, cool. No worries. No worries. Cool. Let's go to Connecticut. All right, you know, you know, put some music on. Let's just drive out there. Let's surf and get some pizza. Okay, you know, whatever. And let's drink. Oh no, no, no Connecticut. All right, cool. No, no worries. We're here all day, Lord. We DC. All right, cool. Four and a half hours. Cool. We're there. Get some gas. Ride out. Music blasting. No, these dudes were slamming on the ground. And them shoes was not like these. I mean, do you get the car? Like, I, me, me personally, your past, I, I, it, it may have been a little bit like, difficult to go to that moment, but there's a lever being pulled. There's an area of, there's a specific area of development that is happening specifically for them. One of the commentaries I, I, that has helped me the most when I talk, when, when it comes to explaining what is happening here, and I will never forget it. I probably preached on this over and over. I've talked about it all the time. So if you're watching online, you're like, yeah, I heard you talk about it. This other, yeah, here we are again because it's so profound. And, and what that is is that God took them through that zigzag because when it was time to actually go to Macedonia, they had been tried as people who would go at the slightest inclination, at the slightest instruction. They had built that muscle. For some of us, for some of us, this lever is being pulled because we have not built this muscle. Every time God asks us to do something, we want the skies to split open. Oh, and we know that oh, th there's a word we love. We love this word as believers. You know what that word is? Confirmation. Oh, we love this word. Just waiting for confirmation, you know, from God. Just want to make sure God is. And God is like, no, 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 no. Paul, what, what I'm trying to do in your life, I'm going to need you. The moment you even suspect that it's me, I want you moving. And I want you comfortable in that space. Because this is not like, oh, 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 we just, our ministry is in trust. And that's, you know, that's, that's where we are. So, we, no, no, no. You. Paul, I am sending you everywhere. I need you to be comfortable with the idea that you're not in one place for you specifically. And I need you to be comfortable with the idea that the moment you even think it is me, you are up and moving. So, yeah, so they went to go Frisia, you no, know, Galatia, you no, know, you know, and, and, and all that. And, and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was insane. But that was, that was a lever being pulled. So, so. The first part, and I'll explain this in a, in a moment. The first part was about the moment that Paul became, that, that Saul became Paul. The second moment was about this direction thing. Now, let's look at that map again. This is the third block for, for Paul. This is based on Acts chapter 27 and 28. We won't read it, but you can write it down. Acts 27, 28. Incredible, incredible story. If you've never read it in, in like detail, you have the excuse now. Acts 27 and 28. In those two chapters, it describes something that happens to Paul. So Paul starts in bottom right there, Caesarea, okay, the Jerusalem area. That's where he begins the journey. Paul is under arrest, and he's being sent to Rome to be tried. That's what's happening. So it's like this is like he's in trouble. Now, again, <laughs> Justice system. I mean, like, you know, you, you all couldn't try me in Jerusalem. I mean, I didn't even do anything wrong, but cool, whatever. You want to send me out. Now you, I got to go. You, guys, you see where Rome is? Opposite end. It's like Florida, Washington. Like, like, <laughs> like the end. Like, he had to go all the way. There. Just not because he was guilty. To be tried. So, so I, in my mind, I'm just like, so what happens if you get to Rome and it's like you're not you're not found guilty? Like he's like, what you just you know hop on a bus and come back? To, like, like, how does this work? Whatever. I, I'm, hey, but this is interesting. They started in, in Caesarea. They go to Sidon, right? And then they they, they dock for a while. They go to to to, to Myria and and uh, Lycia area. Dock for a while. They go to you know the next place and they they're traveling. And then and then right there, shipwreck. By Malta. In a moment, where are they going? They're going to Rome, but as God would have it, there is a shipwreck in Malta. And if you read that story, there was a deliverance in Malta. God was like, oh, Rome? No, 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 no. We're, we're, not, we're not doing Rome. And it, it's going to require me to wreck this ship? 
uh, yeah, I'm gonna wreck it because something needs to happen in Malta. Some of us are going through shipwreck moments on our way to Rome, the place that that we feel like that's where we're trying to get to, and on the way, on the way, for some of us, got wrecked the ship. Got wrecked it. Got wrecked it. Why? Because something. If you read that story, the the entire plate, the the entire Malta. I mean, people were being healed. There was deliverance. It was incredible what happened in Malta. But guess what? It wasn't like, hey, 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 Paul. When when, you, when you're on your way to Rome, uh, you can tell if, you know, stop over in Malta, nice and comfortable. No, no, I'm gonna wreck the ship. Some of us are in wreck moments because of that. All right, now, now let's take a look at the life of Paul and see how these three levers are being pulled. Okay, the first is destiny, the blinding encounter on that horse or wagon, whatever they, they, they had, right on the way on the way to Damascus. Paul, Saul is going out there and he's breathing mother, murderous th- threats. I'm gonna arrest all these Christians, and he had a moment. In that moment, his destiny was changed because the person of who he was, that was the area of work in that specific moment. God had an encounter with him, and his destiny from that moment was forever changed. That was a lever moment right there. In fact, he couldn't continue on that journey to where he was going. God, Jesus was like, yeah, go in the city, go to this place, and then from there, you'll be told what to do. A second ago, he was talking about like, yeah, can I get a letter? Because I'm going to go do this, <laughs> right? A couple of days later, he's, you know, knocked down on his knees and he's getting instructions of what he has to do. His person, the, the person of Saul had changed. That was the moment. The direction, that was a different moment. I mean, some, sometimes these things are, are together and sometimes they're not. The moment leading up to Macedonia, remember, they were Phrygia, Galatia, Troas, all, all. That was a moment where God was pulling that lever of direction. I'm gonna, I need to teach you how to follow my direction, and it's not going to be straight, but that's what we're working on right now. That was the second story we read. The third one we read was about destination. You're on your way to Rome, but I'm going to wreck that <laughs> There's going to be a wreck. We're going to wreck that ship because you have to go to the something that needs to be done in Malta. Three levers. And these are just three. I mean, there were multiple times in in Paul's life when those three levers were being pulled here and there, here and there. Which one for, for Paul do you think was the one with, like, yeah, God, okay, yeah, let's, we're, we're in it, you know, we, we, let's, let's go. Where, where is he at? What do you think? The one where he was most, like, enthused and energized, probably. I'd say probably direction. Because dude was just like, what? Oh, we, we in Frisia? Galatia? No, no? All right, what's next? Where, where we going? Boom. All right, we go here? Yeah, all right, cool, let's do it. It's, it's, it's ministry, let's go. You know, it's like, no, no, not here. Oh, let's just try here. He's just like getting it, getting it. The destiny part, that was also in the moment he probably didn't realize. Eventually, he was probably like, oh, my, was like, the greatest moment of my life is awesome. But destination, it's like, you, Lord, you couldn't, you couldn't just whisper into the ship captain's heart? <laughs> 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 Like, you, you arrest me on a horse and speak to me, but we got to have a shipwreck for this? The easier ways, God. And that was God. If you read scripture, God was telling, God had told Paul, you're going to go through some suffering for me. God had prepped him for this. I don't know about you. I don't know what you're going through in your life. I don't know which of the levers God has been pulling in your life in destiny, in destination, in direction. I promise you, though, the more you think about it right now, he's been pulling them. He's been pulling them. The children of Israel are another example. It's the last our example, and, and, and then we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a conversation together. I know we haven't done that before, but it's important, right? Children of Israel, Exodus chapter three, verse seven to ten. The Lord said, "I have indeed." This is this is him talking to Moses now, right? I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. 
I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So, I've come down to do what? To rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. Put that in your pocket. And then to do what? To bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Put that in your pocket. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now, fast forward, Exodus 13, 17, to when this actually happened. Pharaoh let the people go. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, God, you know, when you try to fight God, you know, you know, you 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 might get in a little bit of trouble. So after a while, you know, Pharaoh was Pharaoh tapped out. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm good, <laughs> tapped out, and this happened. So when Pharaoh let the people go, look at this. Oh, so good. God, let's read that together. God. Okay, one, two, three, go. God. Uh, 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 you catch it. God did not lead them through a certain path, even though that was shorter. There was a lever that God was pulling. So if we look at it together, you look at the children of Israel, okay? Okay? Their destiny, going from slave to free and set apart for worship. So... Exodus 3, God says, all right, cool. Enough is enough. For 400 years, you've been slaved. You've been slaved. So now I am going to change your destiny. I'm changing who you are from slave to free. I'm choosing who you are from, from, from people who do not have a, 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 a knowledge and a, and a desire and a space to worship. I'm going to take you out, and I'm going to make you worshipers. So the first thing is I'm going to change your destiny. The second thing is I'm going to change your destination. You are in Egypt right now, and the Bible says I'm going to take you to where? A promised land flowing with milk and honey. You can barely get three square meals a day right now. I'm taking your, you from that place to a new destination where there is milk and honey. And in terms of direction, though, I'm taking you the longer way. Three levers, right there, that God is pulling. I love stuff like this in Scripture. When I can just see, like, those, cons like, okay, this is a principle. And every time you find principles in Scripture, keep them close. Because you might not be able to memorize all the verses, but when you find, when you find principles, you keep those close. This is a principle in Scripture. It's a principle in Scripture. Now, we've seen that with Abraham, we've seen that with Paul, we've seen that with the children of Israel, and I could go on and on and on. Moses, I can think of just moment, Moses at the burning bush. W which one was that? Des destiny. I mean, it was just like, oh, you're, you're this person flying around, you're whatever. Boom! Moment. Everything from this moment changes about your life. Everything changes from this moment, Right? The fishermen, how Jesus called them. What was that one? Destiny. Absolutely. Oh, oh, you, oh, you, 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 you're on fish right now? Let me put you on a man. Let me put you on a people. You are fishers of people from now on. That was a moment God pulled that lever. Amen. Now, here's a question for you. This Typical church service, you know, we're, we're, we're deviating from that today, and we can because, you know, because we can. Because I think it's important. I want you to think about, okay, here's a question. What are the thoughts that come up for you around direction, destination, or destiny? Just in general, any, any general takeaways this is not, may not even necessarily be your life. I just want us to share, okay? And 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 the, and the floor is open. I want to have maybe a couple of us share. What what 
What do you think about this principle in general of destination, destiny, and direction? What have you learned? What 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 comes up for you? Why me? That's a gr- that's a great that's a great one. Why me? Because as God is pulling any one of those, it could be if it's your if it's your if it's your your lever of joy. You're probably not like, why me? Because you're like, what? Yeah, let's go. But many times, there are moments when it's like, whoa, why me? Because this is not a lever of, this is not, this this lever is not springing joy for me right now. That's awesome. What else? When you think about these levers, anything that comes to mind, what what are you learning? What, what comes up for you? <laughs> oh, that's all of us. <laughs> I love that. It's so true. It, that's such a that's such a, a, a great insight. Cause because if God is saying this is the direction I want to take you, and you're like, well, I mean that sounds great. I love the destiny part, right? I love the destination part. This is this is incredible, right? But but you're saying I love that, right? That we may not be listening, and when we're not listening, we go around the path that we want. We go through all the pain along the way and then get to a moment like the prodigal son. Oh, that's a good one, right? That's the prodigal son. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on one second. Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Okay? And then we start to walk our way back because guess what? God is not going to just solve the problem without you growing or learning what you were supposed to learn in the first place. The lesson, the lesson must be learned. That's so good. So good. Any other thoughts? Two very powerful. Why me? And the moment where you realize, I, in fact, that's, it, it's, almost like, it's almost like in those moments, why me? God can just literally pull another level and say, oh, why you? No problem. Let me take you in this direction to go show you. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. Or, or you get to a point where it's like, oh, maybe. And then boom, God changed your destiny in that moment. And boom. Th- I, this, th- oh, it's so good. Here's a second question for you, okay? Now, this is where it gets real personal, okay? Think about the overarching journey of your life, your life. What are some of the ways you now look back and you see God may have been pulling one of these levers? In your life, looking back now, you're thinking, oh, maybe... Maybe that was God really pulling one of those levers. What comes up for you? What comes up for you? I'll share one. So, years ago, I had a, and what I called a, I mean, it was a terrible, I was dating this girl and had a breakup, and I was just in a nasty place. And I was just not, you know, it was like, God, you know what? I thought you was my boy. <laughs> I thought we was cool. I thought we had it. And that didn't work. And for, I remember for months, I did not touch my Bible. I was just like, I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it right now. And it took a moment for God to arrest me one day and say, do you know what if I delivered you from something? And what if I wanted to show you that, that 
when it comes to this area, you're gonna ha- you're gonna be somebody who's talking about this. How are you gonna talk about it without any experience? And this is an opportunity for you to decide what kind of man. Be- and, and the reason why I'm sharing this is because my reaction as a man dealing with pain, not very healthy. Because if, if you know how men deal with deal with pain, we, it's mm, it's not no it's not it's not healthy. And I was going down a path, and God was like, "If you if you allow your pain to take you down this path, there is no coming back." So you have to decide, wh- like like there's a fork in the road moment. Decide. I'll bring you somebody better. But that was a moment for me. And God was put definitely pulling a lever. Anyone else? Moments in your life. Destiny, direction, destination. And he says, wait. So moment in your life when you had to wait for something that you thought like was already like there. And, and so w- which of the, the levers do you think was that more like, did that change who you were? Did that change the direction of your life a little bit? Did that change the de- like the destination? Okay. We're growing and actually learning. And it's not until we pass that phase and we look back and we're like, oh, wait, the old me would have handled it like this. Ooh, okay. That, okay, that's where it is. That's where it is. So when God is saying, wait, there's something else he's doing on the other side. So when it is now time to move forward, you as a person, like you've, you've changed. Like he used that moment of waiting to change. Some of us have changed in our waiting, haven't we? Some of us used to be very like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to pray this prayer, and then three weeks later, this is going to happen. And then God has just really worked on who you are. So good. So well, good. somebody said online, when will I get there? <laughs> oh, oh this, this, is a, this is a, it looks like a few of us are going through this thing. So someone just said online, when will I get there? So this is like probably like direction because it's like you're on the move, almost like the children of Israel who were supposed to spend 40 days and ended up spending... 40 years, that was the emotion. When will I get there? How long is this going to take? So you're on the move. You're in the right direction. But something about that direction, the timing of it, you're just like, when, when is it? When will I get there? So good. How could you change direction? Oh, 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 oh. oh. when we're being honest with God, how could you change direction? And guess what? Guess what? That's almost a two-pronged thing. Because in that lever, the direction changed, but perhaps what God is trying to do is he's changing direction because he's changing destiny. Mm. He's changing you by first changing your direction. How could you change direction? But here it is, too. That thing of, like, I, I don't know. I don't know if, even know if I want to get on this direction anymore because the way you be switching directions on me, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. So good. Uh, so I think I have two. Okay. I have Destiny. Okay. Um, a while back, I think here in Ignite, which is the song we sang today, Build My Life, God was just telling me that this is what he wants. He wants me to build my life on him. I didn't know what that meant, but I said, okay. Mm. And I remember also I was dating somebody who was not a Christian. And I, I think in that moment, Jesus or God said, is this what you want? And he asked me, like, for real question, is this what you want? You want to date someone who is not a Christian? How are you building your life on me, with me? And Mm. in that moment, I said, no, this is not what I want. Because I don't want to be forcing or dragging someone to church or afraid to talk to him about God or whatever it is. And in that moment, I said, no, this is not what I want. And God changed the direction that is uh, I'm still on the journey. I don't know what destination is, but, you know, those are two things that I think. Direction. Direction and destiny. Amazing. 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 So good. 
and, and, and really, it, you know, it sounds like for you, it, it's like, I, I want to make sure that when I do get to that point in a relationship, I want there to be some level, a good level of alignment, especially in this one area, right? We could differ about like, hey, you know what? You love the outdoors. I kind of like the outdoors. You like potatoes. I like potatoes, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like when it comes to like this thing about like, like who Christ is, I want there to be alignment there. So good. We'll take maybe a couple more. Yeah, I think oh, <coughs> I have a story about destination and destiny. So thinking about, like, you know, the story you just shared, something related to that. I remember years ago I was in a church. Um, I was um, working with my pastor. So there's this convention that happens every year. Some of you may have heard this story before. Um, the national convention for our church. And I'd never been there because it's in Texas. And I was like, I'm not going. It's a lot of people. It's big. It's massive. So I don't even want to go. And my pastor at the time, and that's this, this thing as well. God will use people, right, mm. on that journey. And mm. we should not discount that and not think that it's God. And she kept saying, well, you need to be at this convention. I was like, no, no I really don't. I'm a broke student. I can't afford to go to Texas and find a hotel. So I didn't say anything. A few days before, she asked me, did you book your flight? Did you book anything? So I was like, no. So she paid for it. She was like, you had to be there. So I was like, okay, great. I guess I'm getting a free flight. I'm getting you know, a free stay. I'm going to go and just be my first time there. But it was there at the destination that I met my destiny, which was him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the point is God will use other people too to give you direction. Well, spirit-led people, right? People that you can mm. trust. Not, it's not everybody that you listen to, right? Mm. But people that are your mentors, people that are, you know they hear from God because the wrong word can lead you the wrong des to the wrong destiny. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that. Come on now. <laughs> come, come on now. We leave. We're leaving right after church anyway. <laughs> 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to sit here for a little while. I just recover from that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy that. But, it, but, it, but I, I think there's something that is incredible that she said, which is the fact that you hear when you hear from other people in your life who are like in community, who are in this community of Christ, who have a passion for you. Imagine, and, and, and by the way, who you allow to influence you. Because if she had said, like, you know, like, you know, well, you know, I already said, I don't know why. I don't know why she's so on me. Like, why I got, why do I have, like, why should, if you allow yourself to have that, that access, if people have access to you like that, people will see things in you that you don't see in yourself or, or, and pursue you. Some of us, for example, I don't know why God is asking me to say this. Some of us don't know how to be pursued. Like, like. Why, why is she always calling me to say hello? Like, <laughs> text, text me, right? But like, like, and it's the truth. If we're having an honest conversation, some of us, we, like, it's a struggle. Even in a, like, we don't know how to be pursued because when God is trying to change certain things in us it, we are because we, 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 we don't see ourselves as as being worthy of being pursued and so we push away the very people who are coming out of their comfort zone to pursue us and so we now cancel the work that God is doing in their life maybe they were like I don't know if I don't call this person and God was like no pick up the phone right now and pick up that phone and call that person and then you pick up the phone and you're like Hey, how you doing? And and the person can tell, and they're like, "See God, see, see what, <laughs> see right? Yeah, don't ask me that again." Hallelujah. We'll take one more. Hi. Okay. So, when I left high school, I really wanted to study anthropology for some reason, and I applied to like fifteen schools, and I got in, and it was great. And two days before the school I'm at right now, two days before their deadline closed, they emailed me and they were like, apply. And I was like, why would I do that? I don't, it's an art school. I don't want to do anything artsy. And she was like, apply. I'm like, you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm the big sister here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I did. And I got in and I ended up going there after like tears and all sorts of different things. And now I really love it. And I'm studying writing. And it's... Definitely what I want to do with my life. So. 
Boom. Boom. Destiny moment and direction moment. Incredible. Incredible. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's bring this to a close. Has it, was that great? I, I thought that was like awesome. Here's what we need to do. Okay, right where you are, I want you to bow down your heads. And I want you to think about how those levers are being pulled right now. We talked about how they've been pulled before. I want you to think about your life, how those levers are being pulled right now. The things that are going on in your life right now, that God may be pulling a certain thing. Like, like God may be pulling on the destiny lever. I was having a conversation with someone recently, and I had to be like, look, if you allow me, I can actually help you to improve your craft. But, but you have to get to the point where you see this as a God moment. Because otherwise, you'll be asking why I'm up on your business. You'll be, you'll be taking it as though I'm just like challenging what you're, you're doing. If you see this as a God, as an opportunity, this might be a shift. What is the lever that God is pulling in your life right now? Has God, is God changing the direction of something in your life that you have defined your life with? For some of you, God is changing destination. And, and, and it's not, again, they, like, don't, don't think just merely like the, in the physical with these things. That, that the work that God is doing in your life right now. So for some of us, God is calling us to be better men. Like men of character. For some of us ladies, God is calling us to be better women. Women of character. For some of us, God is calling us to, to, into a closer relationship with him because he's trying to change your des destiny. What lever is God pulling right now in your life? And as you come up with those levers, I want you to lay them down at his feet. And just say, God, I, I surrender this area. I surrender this area of my life to you. I surrender this to you. I ask for help. I ask for help to go through this moment as you're pulling the lever in my life, changing my destiny, my direction, or my destination. God, I ask for help. Help to know that this is a God moment, to recognize it for what it is, and for the grace to go through it the way that I need to go through it. I need your help. I believe that God also wants us to pray, God, send me people, put people in my life who also can be a part of this thing, who who send people in my life to help me, because sometimes we need people to kind of like to push us outside of our comfort zones a little bit, send me people in my life so God we thank you for this moment thank you because there's all the ways that you work on our lives all the levers you pull all the ways that you adjust and build we don't always understand them but we know that we can trust your heart Father God we ask for grace as we go through these moments oh God we ask for grace in the name of Jesus Father God, we ask you, Lord, to bring people into our lives, people who care, people who that we people we can trust in the name of Jesus. People who have the spirit of God in them. They may not even recognize it, but they people who are going to submit themselves to you so that you can use them in our lives, God. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We we leave this service with excitement in our hearts, with confidence in our hearts, knowing fully well that whether it is our direction, destiny, or destination changing, that you are the helm of it all. So we thank you. We give you all the praise, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.